Why hello there! Now I've been doing a lot of reviews lately and I kind of wanted to do something a little more fun. So that's why I decided to do this video, which is the however many facts I ended up coming up with about me that you didn't know. If you'd like to know a little bit more about me, just keep on watching. So the first one, which is I think the most exciting, is I really enjoy doing blood paintings. And in case you don't know what that is, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a painting made out of blood. <laughs> and mine are all my own blood. And it was done safely and, you know, no harm was caused to the artist. And I've done a couple of them and it's really fun. And I really find that just as an artist, purely speaking, it's the most intense form of self-expression because you are literally using your body, yourself, to make the artwork which I just think is kind of neat and it's really fun to work with. I'll show you guys my best blood painting if you'd like to see it. <laughs> so this is my blood painting and this is the biggest one I've ever done. The others have been much smaller but it's not quite as finished as I would like for it to be. But this is a self-portrait in case you could tell. <laughs> I all of a sudden had a nosebleed one night watching a Tim Burton film which I thought was awesome. <laughs> and so I immediately rushed to the bathroom to take pictures of myself with my blood just dripping down my face and my neck. I thought it looked so beautiful. I had the picture for about a year or so and then one day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna paint my face with my own blood. And I was pretty happy with it. I didn't realize at the time, because I was very new to blood painting, that over time it will oxidize and turn more brown than red, but I have pictures of it when it was really fresh, so yeah, this is my blood painting. Yay! Second fact about me, I never want a diamond engagement ring if I get married. The reason being is I feel like everyone has a diamond. Diamonds are kind of like a shallow jewel in my opinion. Everyone who has them wants to be, oh look at my ring, look how much my husband, fiance spent on it, you know, kind of a thing where I'd rather just have something different or unique. There are so many beautiful types of rings out there. Why limit yourself to a diamond? A diamond is kind of boring. <laughs> so I'd prefer something like a ruby or a blood diamond or anything that's not a diamond, essentially. I'd be happy with a crystal ball ring, to be honest, as long as it's something that's different and more towards the alternative style. You know, something with skulls on it or a black rock or something like that. I would definitely prefer that to a diamond, absolutely. It's kind of funny, as I've gotten older I find that I care less about people and more about animals. And what I mean by that is that whenever I see like a, a cute like little animal video or you guys, when you guys send me videos of your animals on Snapchat, oh my god, it makes my day, it really does, so thank you for that. And they're just so cute and adorable and I just want to, I want to love them and hug them. But whenever I see a baby, like a human baby, it's like... They're okay. I don't really see what all the fuss is about, but that's just personal preference, I guess. But give me a cute animal over a baby any day. <laughs> I am definitely more of an animal person than a human person. <laughs> I think this is number four now. And this kind of goes out to more of like my Instagram people, my Snapchat people, and here on YouTube as well. If anybody ever wants to message me, I always respond. Like no matter how many DMs I have, I will always respond to you. And it kind of makes me sad sometimes when people will say, oh, I didn't expect a response from you. You know, you have so many followers. I'm, I'm so excited. This is amazing. <laughs> Personally, I don't think I'm that exciting, but I'm glad you guys think that I am. It's really great to talk to you guys. A lot of you I've had such great conversations with, and I would have been so sad if you hadn't, you know, messaged me in the first place. So thank you to those who have messaged me. I really appreciate it. And it's been a great time talking to you. But it makes me sad that other Instagrammers who even have less followers than I do, they won't answer their DMs and, you know, people will see that they've seen the message and they don't say anything. And I know how heartbreaking that can be because that's happened to me. I've tried to message, you know, bigger YouTubers with 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers. And I guess I can understand with that, they probably get a lot of DMs so they really don't see your messages or they just don't want to check it anymore. They're like, that's it. Too many messages. I can't do this anymore. But with someone, you know, for me, I actually don't get that many messages, believe it or not. I get maybe 10 to 15 a day, and that's completely, you know, reasonable to respond to everyone. And I just really enjoy having online conversations. I am not a phone person. I don't like talking on the phone or on Skype face-to-face. -face. I much prefer texting or, you know, messaging online through Kik or Instagram or Snapchat. 
it just feels safer to me and I like I said I really enjoy talking to you guys now I have seen almost every band that I liked in concert live I'm very lucky I've seen Red Hot Chili Peppers Alice Cooper of course four times I want to make it more come on Alice come back to the States <laughs> Dead Sara The Offspring Ailstorm Corporate Clowny Amon Amarth Iron Maiden Black Sabbath Cradle of Filth Butcher Babies Megadeth I mean, the list goes on. I've seen a lot of bands, and I don't regret seeing any of them. It was all such a great experience, and I love going to concerts so much. It's just such a different experience than listening to music at home. You're there with other people. There's the mosh pit. There's, you know, the wall of death. It's all just so much fun, and the music is so loud. It's, I can feel it in my bones, you know? It's just really fun. I really love it. But I love singing. Whenever I'm happy, when I'm really happy, I just start singing. I can't help myself. I'll just start belting out a Broadway tune or something, or I'll start singing some metal. <laughs> but I just really love it, and if I could sing all day, I probably would. It's just, it's a great thing. I love just the whole feeling that it gives me, and it's kind of a form of therapy for me, I've noticed as well. If I'm having a bad day, I listen to some songs, and then it'll make my day better. It kind of affects my mood. So I find that really interesting and I just, I really love music. <laughs> I absolutely hate <laughs> when anyone, it can be men, women, start off with a conversation with, hey gorgeous, hey honey, hey sweetie, any of that kind of condescending. I know some people don't mean it that way, but it, to me, from someone that I've never met and don't know, it is very condescending. And it's just so irritating. I don't understand why people do that. It's a very familiar kind of terminology. I don't like it, especially when it comes from men. Because in, like I mentioned before, I answer all my DMs. Some I probably shouldn't. <laughs> but a lot of the time, guys are just saying, Hey, sweetie, how's it going? Hey, cutie, how are you? And especially when they keep doing it with every single sentence that they say. Hey gorgeous, how's your day? Oh, that's great, gorgeous. Thanks for saying so, gorgeous. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, enough. <laughs> and a lot of the time, I know it's because the guys want something from me, but I'm obviously not interested because I'm in a relationship now. I've made that quite obvious, and I really kind of lose respect for anyone who tries to message me with any kind of conversation like that. It's just like, no, you realize you're not going to go anywhere, right? <laughs> One guy recently actually had the balls to say, Oh, come on, you know you like it. I was like, no, obviously I don't. That's why I'm asking you to stop. And he was like, oh. On that note, another thing about me, I really don't like it when people think that I'm just a pretty face. And not to sound like I'm, oh yes, I'm so beautiful, I'm so pretty, to sound like I have a huge ego. But when people say, how are you so pretty? Or why are you so pretty? Being pretty or being, you know, aesthetically pleasing, beautiful, however you want to term it, it's not really an accomplishment, it's kind of something that people are- well, it's not kind of something, it is something that people are born with. It's not like I woke up one day and I was less attractive and then decided, oh, you know what? I'm gonna mush my face around and make it more attractive. <laughs> people are born with the faces that they have, and unless you've had plastic surgery, which I haven't, then there's really nothing that you've done to make or break your face. I do wonder sometimes if that affects the way people think of me because they do see that I put effort and time into doing makeup on my face or putting, you know, they probably think this is my real hair and they think, oh, she spent all that money on dyeing it, you know, she must be so vain, she must be so shallow and she only cares about her looks and it's not true and it's frustrating to me because I think in some events in my life that has been something where it's affected me where for example in drama class or drama clubs I was always given the part of the pretty girl who was an airhead and never had any really good dialogue and I resented that because I have more than just my face I have a personality and I have a brain behind it and it's frustrating to have them just kind of lower me to oh she's just a pretty face and that's it my favorite smell in the whole world is freshly mown grass. I just, ugh, it's such a great smell. I love driving by someone's house when they're cutting their front lawn in the car. And I'm just like, ah. <laughs> I love it so much. I stick my head out the window and I start breathing in all the air. <laughs> Despite me being as pale as I am, I really, really enjoy going outside. I really like hiking. I really like being outdoors and just enjoying the sunshine. Granted, I will probably be wearing a huge hat and a lot of sunscreen, but I still enjoy the outdoors. <laughs>
When it comes to personal space, I really don't like being touched by strangers. Even someone who's like a co-worker, I just, I feel so awkward if I don't really know you and if you're not a close family friend or if you're not my family or my boyfriend, my best friend, etc. I just, I don't like being touched. I, it's just how I am, I guess. But anyone who tries to come up to me and like hugging is fine because it's brief, you know, then it's over. Handshakes are fine. But anything that's kind of like putting your arm around me, rubbing my back, I mean, some people, I guess they have no lines when it comes to personal touching of other people whether they know them or not but for me it's it just makes me really uncomfortable and then if the person who's doing it doesn't stop when i ask them specifically to stop then i get mad it's like please respect my space and respect the fact that i'm asking you to stop instead of continuing to do it i really like the drink absinthe but i really don't like licorice like the actual licorice candy it's weird <laughs> Uh, food is definitely the way to my heart. Anybody who gave me a Cinnabon or pizza was like, you are my best friend. <laughs> As time has gone on though, I have developed a form of celiac disease, which is, for those of you who don't know, I can't have processed sugar, wheat, bread, gluten, pasta, any of that stuff. I have a very restricted diet, but sometimes I'll cheat, which is not good because it usually makes my body go crazy and I'll get flu-like symptoms or my immune system will get lowered so I'll get sick more easily, which is probably a reason why I'm sick so much. Oh, that just reminded me. Once I freaked out everyone in my high school by bringing an actual octopus into lunch and I ate it in front of them. It was like in a little jar swimming in its own ink. And I was just like, I looked at the girl across me and I was just like, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I cannot stand, cannot stand when people eat or chew with their mouths open. Oh, it enrages me so much. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. Just the sound. I can't take it. Like if I'm in my, where I work, there's a lunchroom. And if people around me start doing that, I have to put in my headphones and turn up my music really, really loud so I don't kill them. It's bad. <laughs> I am very much a sapiosexual, and what that means, for those of you who don't know, uh, someone who finds intelligence very attractive, and I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I just, I really enjoy having actual conversations with someone, and if I can't have a conversation with you, uh, I mean, what's the point? <laughs> it's like, you can be the most handsome guy in the whole world, but the only thing that's gonna really make me stick around is your brain. <laughs> On that note, there's nothing I hate more than when someone responds to a text with K or LOL as a response. It's an immediate conversation killer. I will not respond. It's like, okay, you were lazy enough to not want to continue the conversation. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> I have only been doing more creative, crazy makeup for the last two years now. I think a little over two years. And I've been on Instagram for two years and YouTube for one year. I hit my one year anniversary on YouTube in August, I believe. And it's, it's so crazy to see how far I've come in such a short amount of time because looking back at my old makeup posts, not gonna lie, I've deleted quite a few of them because I was like, no, this is so embarrassing. But it's amazing how much practice and effort and, you know, just putting more time into what you want to be good at helps. So if you guys have ever felt, you know, like you're, oh, I'm not good enough for this, I'm not gonna be able to do this, you know, I'm not gonna ever be as good as she is or he is, just... If you put in the time and effort, you will be good. You may not be the same style as whoever you're comparing yourself to. Also not good to compare yourself because that kind of kills creativity, just from personal experience. But another thing to note is I am not a makeup artist. I do not do makeup on people for a living. It's just me doing it on myself. I've done it on a couple of people here and there, but I've never really gotten paid for it. So I'm just a makeup addict, not a makeup artist. Another thing, I feel like a lot of these have been stuff I dislike. <laughs> but I really do dislike when people want to be spoon-fed. Just an example where, say you're talking to someone, you're texting, and they ask you what the weather is going to be like, or something like that. Something that they could easily find out for themselves because they have a smartphone or they have access to the internet. And yet, you're asking me, when you're on your phone, all you have to do is literally with the press of a button, you could go look up what the weather's going to be tomorrow. So stuff like that kind of bothers me where it's like, you're being so lazy. Why don't you just go look it up yourself? Why do I have to do it for you? I am not your mother. <laughs> Another thing that that's kind of relevant to my Instagram is that I list everything that's on my face 
on my body if I'm doing any promotional jewelry like this for example. I list every shop that they're from, every makeup product that's on my face, as well as you know where my fangs are from. That is the most commonly asked question on my Instagram. Where are your fangs from? Where did you get your fangs? Are your fangs real? It's like if people would just read, they would get all the answers to the questions they need. And a lot of the times people are DMing me these questions and I'm saying to myself, do you not read the descriptions that I take so much time and effort to type out for you guys? I mean, I'm, I know that's not everyone, but there are quite a few people who do not know how to read on Instagram. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> and my last fact about me, however many I'm at now, I don't know, but my favorite instruments are the guitar and the piano, and I can play both. I'm really terrible beginner at guitar, but I'm fairly good at piano. And I just love the sounds of both of the instruments. An organ, I love. I think the organ is, it would be organ, electric guitar, piano. Uh, whenever I just hear the organ, it's just such a magical instrument to me. It just sends chills up my spine. It makes me so happy. Uh, I wish there were more organ concerts near me. I just, I want to go to organ concerts all the time, especially to hear Toccata and Fugue. Best piece of music ever, hands down. Listening to that will always make me feel better. And it just sounds so ominous and spooky. I love it so much. Well, that is it for my however many facts about me that you didn't know. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one.